Welcome to another video from Up New X. As you can see, I am on Chongqing's Qingui Light Rail Parts Subway Parts Light Rail, and we're heading towards a place to eat noodles. One of the things that I miss most when I'm not in China, particularly not in Chongqing, is Chongqing's noodles. Right now in Chongqing, there are a couple of very famous internet noodle places that somehow. Outside of Chongqing, vloggers, travelers in China would like to visit once they get here. But honestly speaking, for somebody who is a local as me, my opinion about that is most of the Chongqing noodle places are all very good. So today we're heading towards somewhere I just randomly found on the internet, nothing special. And let's see what we can discover. Subways are intense in Chongqing and very, very deep. Maybe I should make a video about the deepest subway station in China, just so you know how ridiculous it is. It is actually harder to find than I expected. Yeah, typical Chongqing thing. You never know on what elevation level your destination is. I think we found where we need to be. Ha ha ha! Wow, it's actually busy, and today is super hot. It's supposed to be 37 degrees. I thought it's gonna be quiet. Clearly not. Wow. Here comes my noodles. The standard Chongqing Xiao Mian. Let me stir this up for you to see. Very chewy noodles. And hot. And in the soup, you have soy sauce, uh, spices, pickles, garlic. It's pretty salty. Hmm. And I guess because today is so hot, you can't see any steam, but it's really hot. The most authentic, most original, simplest form is without meat, with a bit of vegetable with soup but this is actually something people have for breakfast mm -hmm. in my city and this vegetable you can find in a lot of uh, Chinese supermarket we call it Teng Teng Cai, Teng Teng Cai in Chongqing and then in broader area of China we probably call it Kong Xin Cai because it has an empty tube as you can see so I'll continue eating this and finish it before it goes cold. I've cleared up the whole bowl of noodles. Not a lot, but still, it's very hot. And the weather is 37 degrees and no AC, so it's even more intense. Places like this that you can find everywhere on the street corner in Chongqing. And those shops, the soup base is still pretty nice, but usually the noodles are bulk buying, bulk noodles from suppliers. So they wouldn't be making their own noodles anymore. That's the noodle experience. If you ever come to Chongqing, you have to try the local noodles. Just tell them xiao mian, little noodles. And that's what I just had. With a bit of vegetable, nothing else. Obviously, you can tell them whether you want to make it super spicy or not, but I dare you try the harder version. <laughs> Since I'm already out, I thought I might as well just make a video about something um, that's that has been popular in China for years, but because I haven't been back for four years. This is my first time, second time actually in China. I already did it in Shanghai for the first time, but in Chongqing, uh, having a order from Haiti Xicha. So think about this as a brand of mm, milk tea, bubble tea, fruit tea. Got really popular a couple of years ago in China. And at the beginning, it was the high-end version, super expensive. And then it changed its strategy of business. So now it's at the uh, average price that you would get from other uh, brands. And they are very popular. And they tend to make really, really 
high content tea, by which I mean it has a hell lot of stuff. Fruits, cheese, milk, that you cannot imagine that would end up in tea, somehow would end up in their stuff. Wouldn't recommend you have it every day. And the cool thing about this is these days in China, you can order it by scanning the QR code and you don't even have to talk to the, the person making it. <laughs> you just you just enter it from WeChat and then get it ordered. And then at the time when it's already made, it will give you a notice and you can come to the shop and pick it up. And that's what I, I'm doing. I've already ordered it and I'll show you the process on my... Uh, I've already recorded it on my phone. So in the video, you'll see how it's done. Just scan the QR code and order it. So the shop is actually empty and people come in and pick up orders. The delivery person is coming to pick up other people's orders right in front of my eyes. I mean, it's cool for <laughs> during COVID that you don't have to have personal contact ordering stuff, but obviously you can argue, you know, that kind of makes the whole world even less connected than before. But that's how it's done these days in China. And it says there are seven minutes, <laughs> seven minutes left. The convenience of technology and the internet definitely gets most expressed in uh, China these days. Mm -hmm. My order is actually ready. I'm going to pick it up. Uh, so, now that is my order. What's in it? At the bottom, I think that's great. And then a lot of... Um, also different from 7-Eleven <laughs> stuff in Canada. Switch over. Let you see the shop better. And it's top light anyway, so it's gonna make me look terrible. Cheers! See that? In certain cities and countries, uh, there are uh, this shop, but definitely not in Winnipeg. We have panda tea, cha type, and that's about it. And it's very old fashioned, just bubble tea. Whereas in China, every season they make new stuff that you've never heard of. Sometimes it's definitely just for marketing, obviously, but it's funny <laughs> that this happens all the time. I do have a lot of plans for the rest of September, and you're gonna get some unusual videos from me. So uh, I'll keep it a secret for now, but when it happens, you'll know. Please take care. I'll see you in the next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.